Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. In this guide, I'm going to show you how to set up and configure the Yuzu emulator for Android, which allows you to play your legally backed up Nintendo Switch games on Android. This includes setting tweaks, removing on-screen controls, GPU drivers, importing and exporting Yuzu data and save data, and even how to install mods and cheats. Let's jump right in. I'll leave a written version of this guide, which is hosted on my website, in the description as well, in case you prefer that. I will not be showing you how to get ROMs, firmware files, or anything that could get me in trouble with the Nintendo Ninjas. Sorry Nintendo. First up, the best version of Yuzu is actually not the one from the Google Play Store. Either of them. But if you're someone who just wants the quick and easy way, then you can grab that version if you want. If you have a bit more technical knowledge, the best version is actually from GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description to that one. The one issue with the GitHub release is that it won't automatically update, but thankfully there's a program called Obtainium which will do that for you, and I'll leave a link in the description to my video on that. Download the Yuzu APK from the GitHub link, or install it from the Play Store, and then open it. The current version on GitHub as of this video is 265, but just grab whatever the latest APK is as it's basically updated daily. Open the app and click get started. Grant permissions for each thing that it asks you to do. Now we come to the first item that I can't show you how to get, and that's prod.keys. I'm using mine dumped from an actual Nintendo Switch, which is the legal way. I would suggest googling prod.keys to find out more. Find and select your prod.keys file when you have it. Next up is we have to tell Yuzu where our Nintendo Switch ROMs are. Click add games and navigate to the folder that has your legally backed up Nintendo Switch ROMs. I'm using the ones that came directly off of my Nintendo Switch. For organization, I suggest having a Switch ROMs folder, and then a subfolder that has updates and DLC. So you'll have the base games and then all of the updates and DLC in a separate subfolder. You'll see why in a bit. We're done with this part, so click continue. You can now see all of your games here in a grid, but there's still some settings we should go over. Click the settings cog top left, then advanced settings, then click system. If your device is powerful enough, you might be able to turn on docked mode here. But for most games and most devices, you'll want to stay in handheld mode. I would advise leaving this as handheld mode either way, and then doing per game settings for any games you want to use dock mode for, and I'll show that later. Head back and into graphics. Once again, if you have a strong enough device, you could swap the resolution here to something higher, especially if you're outputting to a TV or a higher resolution display. Same advice here though, leave it as default for now, and change anything on a per game basis later. Scroll down and you'll see a few options here. Because Yuzu is still early access and being developed, a lot of games will need some setting changes and won't work with the default settings as you see them here. You might need to turn on asynchronous shader sometimes or reactive flushing, but if you run into a game that isn't working, try these options here. Now head back and then back again to the main settings screen. Jump into controls and this is where you can add more players if you have some Bluetooth controllers connected, or even just map your own controller to what you want. Most times your controls should be recognized and mapped out of the box without you needing to do anything, but it's always good to come here and just map it yourself just in case. Back out again and head to GPU driver manager. This will take some technical know-how again, so if you're the type to just want things to run, you can skip this. For everyone else that wants the best performance, you can use custom GPU drivers here. I'll include a link to the GitHub repository for GPU drivers. You'll want to select the one that matches your device. So for example, right now the most recent Odin 2 driver would be the Qualcomm driver version 676.53. And if you read the description for all of the others, it says broken on 8 Gen 2, meaning Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is what the Odin 2 has. 
If you click the Assets drop down, you can download the zip file that's right there. Then in Yuzu, on the GPU Driver Manager page, select Install bottom right and navigate to that zip file. Then just make sure it's selected on screen to use it. To make things a bit more complicated, the most recent GPU driver is not always the best for every game, so you might find yourself using a few different ones to get the best performance. Back out again and head to Manage Yuzu Data. There's a few things that you can do here. You can import or export your entire Yuzu data, you can import or export your save data, install game updates or DLC, firmware, and more. I actually have some save data from a previous Yuzu installation, so I'm just going to import it here. Because Yuzu's save data is hidden behind Android's data storage, you can't use cloud syncing for saves right now. Next up, I'm going to install game updates and DLC for the games that I have. I'll navigate to the folder that has all of my updates and DLC, select all, and then select, and Yuzu will install all of them for me. It'll take some time, so just come back in a bit. It's important to note that when you install game updates and DLC, it's installing them to your internal storage. So it's going to take up space on your internal storage. There's just no way around this right now. But if you happen to do the install and see that Yuzu is taking up a ton of space, that's the reason why. After installing, you could delete the original updates and DLC files if you want off of your SD card since it'll all be in that Yuzu folder. Then we come to install firmware, and this will be necessary for everyone. You need to install Switch firmware here, and once again, I'm going to be using my legally backed up firmware. Navigate to your zip file and install it. I haven't had a reason to use Amiibo keys, and I'm not sure what it actually does, although I can guess, but I assume anyone looking to use Amiibos or fake Amiibos can look deeper into how this works. Head all the way back to the main game screen and just load a game by selecting it. You'll see you instantly have on-screen controls, and if you're using a handheld controller, we don't want that. If your device has a back button, push it, or swipe and click the back button from the navigation bar. You'll get an in-game menu, head to overlay options, and turn off show overlay. You can also disable the FPS counter here if you'd like. Go ahead and exit the game through that menu. And now we're back on the main screen. Yuzu has the ability to do per game settings, which is crucial because each game does require different settings a lot of the time. You may want docked mode for one game and handheld for another, or you might need reactive flushing on for one and for the other you don't. The way to access this is to push and hold on a game and you'll be greeted with a new menu and if you look at the top right, you can see settings to change per game settings. Anything changed here will only affect this specific game. But if you head to add-ons on the right, then install, you can install updates, DLC, or even mods and cheats easily. What's also cool is if you load into the game and then head back to the in-game menu, you can see per game settings options here. So you can do some things on the fly if you'd like. Let's take a look at installing a mod. I'm going to use the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening because without a mod, the game is broken with a blur across the screen right now. There's a mod that fixes that. I'm going to use GameBanana.com, which has a mod section and it has the mod that we need. If you scroll down on the page, you'll see the download of the zip file. Extract it, and I'm using Solid File Explorer, which I always recommend as a file manager to do so. Head into the folder, and you want to rename the title ID, which is the folder inside of titles, and you want to rename it to no DOF in this particular case. Every mod is different, but for this one, it needed to be no DOF, like you see it on screen for it to work. Then install the mod using the add-on screen, and you want to select that no DOF folder that has the ROM FS folder inside. If you did it right, it'll look like it does on my screen. 
Make sure it's selected so it's enabled and then open the game. And there we go. We have no more blur in Link's Awakening. So that's great for mods. What about cheats? Well, it's the same sort of idea. I like to use GBA temp for cheats. And an easy way is just to Google the game name plus cheats and then add GBA temp to the end. And you should get the right search results. Let's use Pokemon Scarlet for this example. First thing we need to do is find out what version of the game we have, especially if you've installed updates. In Yuzu, push and hold on Pokemon Scarlet and then select info at the top left. In this scenario, I'm actually using version 3.0.0. .0. So on the GBA temp page, I want to scroll to that version and we'll see that the file name should be all of these letters and numbers. And it's a text file. Scroll to the bottom of the page and then download the attachment. In this case, it's named scvi.zip. Go ahead and open Solid File Explorer and then extract it. Go into the Cheats folder and remove all except for the one that matches the file name for your version. Edit the file and you want to choose the cheat that you want to use. So I want to use Force Shiny On here. So what you want to do is remove all of the other cheats except for Force Shiny On. So just delete all of the other text except for the specific cheat that you want. And so that will be the only cheat left in this file after you're done. Rename the title ID folder to Force Shiny On, just to make things easy. Head back to Yuzu, Add-ons, and install that cheat the same way that we did the mod. But we're going to select the Force Shiny On folder. Open the game and get into a battle to see if it worked. And it did. Do these steps to add any cheats that you want. Other than that, that's the full Yuzu for Android setup guide. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one.